In our last unit, we talked about matter. Matter is everywhere and everything is made up of matter. Even the air around us contains matter. In this unit, what we're gonna talk about is measuring that matter. The first measurement we're gonna be doing today is mass. We'll be measuring the mass of different objects. In the metric system, we use grams as our base unit for mass. Today we'll be measuring Triscuit crackers. Now this Triscuit cracker has a certain amount of atoms and molecules in it. That's the mass of the object. And as long as I don't break it or take anything off, that mass should remain the same, no matter where I measure it. So I can take this Triscuit into space, I can take it to a different planet, and it would always come up with the same mass. This is a kitchen balance. The balance works by having a fulcrum in the middle and two arms hanging off either side. As long as the masses on both sides are equal, the balance will stay level. As I put both Triscuit crackers on, their masses are equal. The balance stays level. If I offset the mass on one of the arms, the arm with the higher mass will go down. When measuring the mass of an object, we're comparing it to something else. Now we have standards like grams and things like that that we can measure it to. What's unique about mass that's not gonna work with weight is the mass will remain the same no matter where we go. So these two Triscuit crackers will be balanced on our balance no matter where we take our very scientific balance here. If I was to do this same experiment on the moon, the two Triscuits would remain balanced because they have the same amount of mass in them. Mass never changes. To measure the weight of an object, we use a scale. You might be familiar with the scale in your bathroom to weigh yourself. This is a food scale. It works exactly the same way. There's a platform on top, and then inside there's usually some sort of spring or resistance, and as you step on it, it compresses it and goes down. And the scale itself is, is able to measure how compressed it gets and give you a number. So the bigger the object on top, or the heavier the object on top, the more it pushes it down. So we're gonna do that for our Triscuits. I have my scale set to my metric units for grams, and I'm gonna place my cracker on top. This Triscuit weighs five grams. The difference between mass and weight is weight is affected by gravity. If I took this scale and this cracker to the moon, where the gravity is much less than it is here on Earth, and put it on here, it would read a different number. Now the cracker itself and the scale haven't changed at all. So the gravity is pulling it down five grams worth here, but it would only be about one gram worth on the moon. The mass, however, would remain the same. You can measure the volume of a regular sized object at home. All you're gonna need is a regular sized box, something like this. Uh, Rectangular prism works great, and a measuring tape. My measuring tape comes with both metric and customary units. I'll be using the metric units for today, and so we'll be measuring everything in centimeters. So what I'm gonna do <clears throat> with my rectangular prism is I'm gonna pick a point, a corner, and then I'm going to measure the height, the width, and the depth of the object. Once I have those three numbers, I can multiply them together and get my final uh, cubic volume for how much volume or space this object takes up. So first I'll measure my height, 26 centimeters, and then my width, 37 centimeters, and my depth, 27 centimeters. Once we have those three measurements, we can multiply all three numbers together. That's going to get us 25,974 cubic centimeters. That's the volume or the amount of space that this package takes up. You can use liquid to measure the volume of irregular objects as well. For example, this potato. This potato would be very difficult for us to try and measure the height and width and depth of it and then multiply those together like we did with the box. So what we can do is we take this object, we find a known amount of liquid, 
and then we dunk it in the liquid. The liquid will be displaced or move up the exact volume of the potato. You've probably seen this before if you've ever jumped into a pool or a bathtub. When you get in, you displace water. The water can't be in the same place as you. So you push it out of the way. And what happens is the water in the pool or the bathtub rises. If we measure the amount, exact amount of that rise, we'll know exactly the volume of this object. I'm gonna dunk the potato in the water and we're gonna start at 300 milliliters and we'll see where it ends up. We've jumped up to 450 milliliters. What we do is we find the difference between those two or just do some subtraction. We're gonna take our final number, 450, and subtract our starting number, 300, and that will end us out with 150 milliliters, which is the exact volume of our potato. Take some time to look around the house, especially the kitchen. You'll find a lot of products are measured both in customary and metric units. Those are some of the different ways that we measure mass using the metric system. Now get out there and let's see how you measure up.